Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials in quantum statistics. This is video number 36A, and this is the heat capacity of a quantum system with quantized quantized energy levels. <clears throat> so my video, my website is universityphysicstutorials.com. The reason this particular video is of interest is because we've modeled both light photons and vibrational phonons in a solid as harmonic oscillators. Thus, with this formula and the previous formula for the average energy, we're able to get all the information we need about uh, vibrational phonons and light pho photons. So this video is in conjunction with video number 36B entitled the specific heat form, uh, the Einstein ho formula for the specific heat of a body. The previous video to this is number 35 where I calculated the average energy of a quantum uh, uh, system with quantized energy levels. Alright, so to do a small bit of revision, in the previous video we used the partition function in order to calculate the average energy of a single harmonic oscillator. And the average energy of a single harmonic oscillator was epsilon over e to the beta epsilon minus 1. For epsilon is the quantum of energy h nu. All right. Now notice we have a single characteristic frequency. So that every different phonon in our solid or photon in the uh, electromagnetic um, wave has a single frequency. And we know that, well you may or may not know that uh, Peter Boy also used a, sing a similar thing, however he had multiple frequencies and as a result had a better answer. So if we multiply it by the number of har uh, harmonic oscillators we get the total average energy but if we ignore fluctuations we just call this the total energy. Alright, so the total energy of our system. So what I want to do now is calculate the heat capacity. Notice by the way the difference between the heat capacity and the specific heat capacity. So C is the heat capacity and small c is the specific heat capacity. and the heat capacity of a body divided by the mass is the uh, is the specific heat capacity. So it's the heat capacity per unit mass. All right. Now there are two types of heat capacity. You can have the heat capacity at constant pressure and heat capacity at constant volume. And the difference between the both for one mole is the molar gas constant R. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to begin. So bear with me a moment there now. So just to write the formula that we had a moment ago. So a moment ago, I said that uh, we had the we had the average energy for a single harmonic oscillator was epsilon over e to the beta epsilon minus one. So beta, of course, is equal to one over kT. Now I'm going to tell you that the heat capacity at constant volume is equal to the time derivative, or excuse me, the the temperature derivative of the energy. So it's del E del T. You could look up my videos on thermodynamics if you're not satisfied with that, but um, I'm sure you've seen that at least once in your studies of physics before. Okay, so let's get del del t of our average energy. So del del t of E bar is equal, is equal to epsilon outside of del del t of e to the epsilon over kt minus 1 to the power of minus 1. Alright, so that's, that, excuse me, that should be pretty straightforward. So where do we go from here? We need to get the time derivative, or excuse me, the temperature derivative of this. So it's going to be uh, C sub V, it's going to be epsilon inside of minus 1, going to e to the beta epsilon minus 1 squared, and then we're going to have del del T of this, so that's going to be minus epsilon over kT squared times e to the uh, beta epsilon like that. Okay? So look, it's just a bit of differentiation. There's nothing particular. No, there's nothing particularly um, interesting, I suppose, about that. So let's just rearrange it. The heat capacity at constant volume is going to be epsilon, positive epsilon squared. Then we're going to have e to the beta epsilon, and we're going to have a factor of e to the beta epsilon minus one to be squared, and we're also going to have this factor of k times t to be squared like that. Okay. Now, where do we go from? What's, what's, the, what's the significance of this? The significance of this is as follows. Einstein said that he, he modeled a solid, or the energy inside a solid, as being carried by vibrational phonons, these quantized fi vibrational phonons. So he, he, vib he, he, he said each one of these is a harmonic oscillator. So that means that in our solid, the heat capacity for a single oscillator is this. Okay. In order to get the heat capacity for a mole of oscillators, okay, obviously we need to add Avogadro's number like that. 
Okay, now the thing about it is Einstein also said that each oscillator can move in three different directions. So what he did is he multiplied by three for that reason. Okay, so in the next video you'll see you'll see this exact you'll see this exact formula. Now what it did do though, or what Einstein did do, is he said that the the vibrational um, or the, the vibrational quantum was h nu, like I said. So we have a single characteristic frequency. So instead of epsilon, we have h nu. So this means we have h nu to be squared here like this, and that means we have k t, we, we have k t to be squared. So what I'd like to do is multiply above by k, and that means we have k t to be squared like that. And finally, I can rewrite this formula in the way that Einstein had it, and the way I have it in video number 36b, c sub v is equal to 3 times n a n sub a. We have h nu over k t, all to be squared. Now there's actually, excuse me, 3 n sub a times k. Okay, then we have e to the h nu over k t, and we have e to the h nu over k t minus 1, to be squared. And the last thing is, we know that the molar gas constant is equal to the molecular gas constant uh, multiplied by Avogadro's number. So R is equal to n sub a times k, which is exactly what we have down here. So what we actually have is 3R. So plug that in down here. We have 3R. And this is known as the Einstein formula for the heat capacity of the body. Of course, if you divide by uh, the mass of the body, we're going to get this specific heat capacity of the body. Okay. Now, does it form? Does it uh, does it follow the, the law of Joulon with Petit? It's something I, I discuss in video 36b. And the answer is yes. Of course, it does. It does go to three R at high temperatures, and it does go to zero at low temperatures. Um, so that's all I've got to say about that. Uh, now, like I said, it's interesting because we're now assuming that we have these vibrational phonons inside a solid. But this formula will also work, or it would, there would be an analogous formula for photons, like photons, of course, because they obey both Einstein statistics also, and we model them also as being harmonic oscillators. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorial.com. Thank you.